Greetings, Gemstone. I am Templeton Page Taylor, and welcome back to another episode of Hidden Gem. Where on today's episode, we're going to talk about the PlayStation Classic. <laughs> yeah, I know. Another PlayStation Classic video. What can I tell you about the PlayStation Classic that hasn't already been said? Well, not a whole lot, really. I mean, there are so many videos that are out there where people are harping on this thing. A lot of people are immediately taking the fact that, well, the system sucks. And I'm here to tell you that I like the system. You know, I really do like the PlayStation Classic. Yeah, it comes with two controllers, as we all know. It is an exact replica of the original PlayStation that came out in 1994, you know. And the game library may not be the best in the world, and I can agree with that. It's not the best, but I like the content that is on the PlayStation Classic. And yeah, when it first launched, it was $100, 99 bucks. A lot of people look at that and say, wow, this $99 system only comes with 20 video games? No AC plug? No analog controllers? This is a ripoff. Let me remind you that the new Nintendo DS's that came out were $200, no video games whatsoever, or downloadable ones, no AC plug either, and the AC plug was an additional $10. So let's see, $99, 20 games, two controllers, but no AC plug, $200, no games, no AC plug. Hmm. I don't see where that's a problem. How is it okay for Nintendo to do that and not Sony? I'm just curious. But I'm here to talk about why I like the PlayStation Classic. I enjoy the library. There's not a whole lot of content that I grew up with uh, that's on this thing. So it's a nice uh, change of pace for me. You know? The fact that it came with two regular controllers since only one game really needed it, is okay with me. I don't mind it whatsoever. And right now, I have plenty of AC plugs, so I can just find one in my house somewhere and get an AC. That works for me. It's uh, not 10 more dollars out of my pocket, as opposed to Nintendo's DS. Just saying. But enough with the rant. Let me give you an example of why I like PlayStation Classic. Here it is. Let's go. So here is the PlayStation Classic booting up. And as you can see, it starts with a custom game, which when I first actually set this up, it didn't really, I didn't really know that I was actually getting into the internals for the first time. I've deleted that one, so uh, let me go through these games. We've got Battle Arena Toshinden. We have Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, I skipped accidentally, Final Fantasy 7, Grand Theft Auto, Intelligent Cube, Jumping Flash, Metal Gear Solid, a very awesome game I enjoyed playing. Uh, Mr. Driller, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Revelations Persona, which is very cool because I never played the original, uh, Ridge Racer Type 4, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, Twisted Metal, and the very first game I ever owned on my PlayStation, Wild Arms. Now, yeah, it doesn't seem like very much, and I can definitely see how a lot of people would not enjoy these games at all, but I actually enjoy them very much so. Uh, reason being is because a lot of the games that are in this library are games that I never actually owned at all. So. That's very cool. And 
One thing that I think is really neat is how the background actually looks just like the original memory card screen. And I know a lot of people may not like that aspect of it, but I think that's really cool. I like the PlayStation Classic, and not a whole lot of people are going to agree with me. There's a lot of content on here that I never had growing up. I had a lot of actual RPGs, mostly RPGs more than anything else. The settings menu, as everyone knows who has seen this, other, I mean, seen other videos, knows that it is not a very impressive menu. And I can understand why a lot of people don't like this because they want the major names on here of games like Spyro and Crash Bandicoot and many, many others. But I actually enjoy the content on here. I like the way it actually looks. I like how the guide actually looks like a little book if you pay attention to the detail. That's really neat, you know? And yeah, it's only got the product website which you can actually scan with the QR code. And I actually have, it was pretty neat personally. I enjoy looking at it. Uh, the console button guide uh, gives you what it looks like when you change multiple discs and just a, uh, what uh, everything does. The reset button, you know, makes you quit the game and there's a save state. Uh, the power button obviously powers it on and off. And then, you know, you have the open button, which allows you to switch discs and I like the nostalgic feel, uh, feel of doing that personally. That's really neat. Um, it's got the memory card slot which gives you the 15 save slots and apparently I have a one of Alundra that I apparently played before when uh, I was trying to work with this thing but we can just uh, delete it why not we'll just delete that one there there we go I don't think I really got very far in the game anyways so there's no reason to have it on there at all and finally of course you have your resume point for any of your games which right now I don't have a resume point for any of these games whatsoever but yeah a lot of these games cool borders never I never had destruction derby Grand Theft Auto I was never really a big fan of Grand Theft Auto Intelligent Cube, I played a little bit. Of course, if you look at the save state, it says the IQ is zero, which is pretty funny because I haven't played this game in years. So yeah, I lost uh, very quickly when I uh, tried it again. So yeah, I'm apparently very stupid right now, according to this, you know, I not even have a point of IQ. So, you know, hope uh, you all enjoyed looking at that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Jumping Flash, I remember playing again when I was a kid, but I wasn't really, uh, into it too much. Metal Gear Solid, of course I had that one. Uh, the two disc game, very awesome to play. Mr. Driller, never even heard of that one. Uh, and so I'd be willing to play that one, check it out. Odd World, had it, played it, didn't save all the uh, characters you had to save. Of course I didn't know how, I knew you had to save 99, but didn't know about half of the secrets. So that was uh, still a fun one I enjoyed playing. Rayman, for some reason, I remember trying to play when I was a kid and I couldn't get past the first level at all. Never played Resident Evil. Only Resident Evil game I've ever played is Resident Evil 2, believe it or not. I've seen footage for all of them, but never uh, never played a Resident Evil, let alone the director's cut. First Persona game I ever played was Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona 5. Never played Tim number 2, uh, Innocent Sin, or Eternal Darkness. Eternal Punishment, I mean, sorry for the... Uh, and correcting it for all you Persona fans out there. Wasn't really a big racing fan when I was a kid, so it's often awesome played Ridge Racer. Enjoyed playing Puzzle Fighter with a friend of mine named Ray years ago. Uh, you know, he would always kick my butt at it. He even showed me that, like, if you do a certain combination, you can, like, see a fighter dress up as lion -O from Thundercats, which is really cool. Uh, wasn't really into Siphon Filter. Played Tekken 1 and 2. Never played the third one. Uh, not a fan of, uh... Rainbow Six, so, uh, but then again, I hear a lot of people aren't either. Remember playing Twisted Metal with my friend John, you know? God rest his soul, he passed away many years ago. But uh, he got me into Twisted Metal, played one and two, but that's all I ever played after that. And of course, like I said in a previous video, I played all five Wild Arms, but I've only beaten number one. And I really enjoyed uh, replaying this one, actually, and I beat it again later on. Uh, earlier, I mean. And so I would love to give a review on that one. 
But I really enjoy this library. And now a lot of you are going to say, oh my god, this dude's crazy. But no, I like it because there's a lot of content on this system that I never really uh, got to play. So that is the reason why I enjoy having a PlayStation Classic. Plus, I don't have a lot of the original game consoles that everyone else does. I'll do a video on what I do have uh, later on. But for now, this PlayStation Classic is my only PlayStation that I have. I do not have any other PlayStation systems at all. Well, I do have another. I don't have the original PlayStation like a lot of many other people do, unfortunately. I am a game collector, but I'm only recently getting back into it because, you know, life happens and, you know, I am a married man. I have responsibilities, so I only play these games when I can get the opportunity to do so. You know, I don't want to take up way too much time and not really be a uh, uh, kind of guy who's going to just, you know, just push away my responsibilities and not take care of any of this stuff, you know. But these reasons alone with the game content, uh, sure, yeah, a lot of them are the PAL versions. A lot of people don't like that fact, but you can still play them. They're still playable, you know, it's just like playing a game at 30 frames per second as opposed to playing a game at 60 frames per second. So... You know, even though yeah, only half of them are NTSC and the other half and the other half are PAL, they're still fun games to play. I've played a little bit of each of them to get a bit of a feel on how they work, and I enjoy playing every single one of them. These are really good games. I think at least I like this uh, library of options to play because there is really something for everybody. So that's. Uh, the PlayStation right there in a nutshell, the PlayStation Classic, and uh, why I like it so much because of what they have on there. And there you have it, the PlayStation Classic, one of my favorite mini classic systems that is out now. I am not lying when I say that this is an awesome system. I really like it. It is a very fun thing to have in my house. You know, my family enjoys it, so that's really what I look for, is what my family likes, and they like it. My little one loves playing the games with me. She likes holding on to the controller and just getting the impression, the feeling, that she's doing the same things that I'm doing, you know? So, why not get a PlayStation Classic? They're very inexpensive now. When I got mine, I got mine at $39, you know, not the full $99, because at the time when I wanted to buy it, which I probably would have bought it at $99, I just didn't have the money. But still, right now, even for the few games that are on it, I would say, go ahead and grab yourself a PlayStation Classic. Even for $20, games that are on it are very enjoyable and very, very fun to play. That's the end of this video. Gemstones, have yourselves a great day. And for my next video, I'm going to talk about the True Blue Mini Crackhead Stick for the PlayStation Classic that adds 101 games. Have a good night.